that this too, too solid flesh would melt, thaw, and resolve itself into a dew. Oh, that the everlasting had not fixed his cannon against self-slaughter. Oh, God, God, how weary, stale, flat, and unprofitable seem to me all the uses of this world. Fie on da, fie. It is an unweeded garden that grows to seed. Things rank and gross in nature possess it merely. That it should come to this. But two months dead, nay, not so much, not two, so excellent a king, that was to this Hyperion to a satyr, so loving to my mother, that he might not be team the winds of heaven visit her face too roughly. Heaven and earth must I remember why she would hang on him as if increase of appetite had grown with what it fed on. Yet within a month, let me not think on it. Frailty, thy name is woman. A little month, or ere those shoes were old with which she followed my poor father's body like Niobe, all tears. Why, she, even she, oh God, a beast that wants discourse of reason would have mourned longer, married with mine uncle, my father's brother. But no more like my father than I to Hercules. Within a month, ere yet the salt of most unrighteous tears had left the flushing in her gallied eyes, she married, oh, most wicked speed, to post with such dexterity to incestuous sheets. It is not, nor it cannot come to good, but break my heart. I must hold my tongue. Oh, what a rogue and peasant slave am I! Is it not monstrous that this player here, but in a fiction, in a dream of passion, could force his soul so to his own conceit that from its working all his visage wand, tears in his eyes, distraction in his aspect, a broken voice and his whole function suiting with forms to his conceit and all for nothing. A Hecuba. What's Hecuba to him or he to Hecuba that he should weep for her? What would he do had he the motive and the cue for passion that I have? He would drown the stage with tears and cleave the general ear with horrid speech, make mad the guilty and appall the free, confound the ignorant and amaze indeed the very faculties of eyes and ears. Yet I, a dull and muddy metal rascal, peak like John of dreams, unpregnant of my cause, and can say nothing. No, not for a king upon whose property and most dear life a damned defeat was made. Am I a coward? Who calls me villain, breaks my pate across, plucks up my beard and blows it in my face, tweaks me by the nose, gives me the lie, the throat as deepest of the lungs? Who does me this, huh? It's wounds. I should take it, for it cannot be. But I am pigeon-livered and lack gall to make oppression bitter. Or, ere this, I should have fatted all the region kites with this slave's awful, bloody, bawdy villain, remorseless, treacherous, lecherous, kindless villain. Oh, vengeance! He... What? What an ass am I. This is most brave that I, the son of a dear father, murdered, prompted to my revenge by heaven and hell, must, like a whore, unpack my heart with words and fall a-cursing like a very drab, a scullion, fly upon it, fall. Mm. About my brain. I have heard that guilty creatures sitting at a play have, by the very cunning of the scene, been struck so to the soul that presently they have proclaimed their malefactions. 
For murder, though it have no tongue, will speak with most miraculous organ. I'll have these players play something like the murder of my father before mine uncle. I'll observe his looks. I'll tent him to the quick. If he but blench, I know my course. The spirit that I have seen may be the devil. And the devil has power to assume a pleasing shape. Yea, and perhaps... Out of my weakness and my melancholy, as he is very potent with such spirits, abuses me to damn me. I'll have grounds more relative than this. The play's the thing wherein I'll catch the conscience of the king. To be or not to be. That is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune or to take arms against a sea of troubles and by opposing end them to die, to sleep no more. And by a sleep to say we end the heartache and the thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to. It is a consummation devoutly to be wished. To die, to sleep. To sleep, perchance to dream. Aye, there's the rub. For in that sleep of death, what dreams may come when we have shuffled off this mortal coil must give us pause. There's the respect that makes calamity of so long life. For who would bear the whips and scorns of time, the oppressor's wrong, the proud man's contumely, the pangs of despised love, the law's delay, the insolence of office, and the spurns which patient merit of the unworthy takes when he himself might his quietus make with a bare bodkin? Who would fardels bear to grunt and sweat under a weary life but that the dread of something after death, the undiscovered country from whose bourn no traveler returns, puzzles the will and makes us rather bear those ills we have and fly to others that we know not of. Thus conscience doth make cowards of us all, and thus the native hue of resolution is sicklied o'er with the pale cast of thought, and enterprises of great pith and moment with this regard, their currents turn awry, and lose the name of action. There's a special providence in the fall of a sparrow. It is not to come. If it be not to come, it will be now. If it be not now, yet it will come. The readiness is all. Since no man hath aught of what he leaves, what is to leave betimes, let be.